Okay, hello everybody, thank you for waiting. Uh, my name is Simon Sherborne and welcome to this week's uh, AVID Audio Community Plugin webinar. Uh, we run these about once every two weeks, um, just covering different new workflows, uh, interesting features and talking to different guests. And this time we are focusing on Dolby Atmos mixing for TV. Uh, we've done quite a bit of uh, coverage of Atmos for movies and uh, for music more recently, but really the driving uh, force for Atmos at the moment has been in TV production. And we're very lucky this week to have Nick Fry from UK Post House The Farm with us to answer our questions. Um, so uh, before we start, I'm going to, uh, hi Nick, good to see you. Okay, so we'll talk, I'll introduce Nick in a moment. Uh, before we do that, I just want to uh, give you some information about how this works. We're actually using Zoom to uh, run the webinar and we're also streaming off onto YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. So welcome if you're there. Um, I think we do have some room in the Zoom room if you did want to jump in. Um, but either way, you should be able to ask questions to Nick on any of the platforms. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of things to do on your screen. So what we'd recommend is that if you're on Zoom, if you choose the gallery view uh, rather than the speaker view, then you'll be able to see both Nick and me at the same time. We won't just keep flashing up and down. Um, and if you're seeing anybody else, um, there is a setting to hide other participants. We actually have it, I think, switched so that um, um, so that you can. Um, uh, so we've got it switched so that you can't be seen or heard, um, but you can do Q and A. Um, can I just double check with our team? I've got a message here saying there's no audio. So can everybody hear me okay? I can okay. hear you fine, yeah. Fantastic. So that, that's the voice of Dave. There's one of the other guys on our team. Um, so Dave and Gil are with me on Zoom here who, who will be um, um, posing some of your questions. And then on the other social media platforms, we've also got some people from the team. So if you write in the comments, then you, uh, they will pick that up and send them over to us. Um, so yes, uh, in terms of questions, if you're on Zoom, um, if you use the Q&A button, there is a chat and uh, raise hand functions, but if you just type into the Q&A function, then we will pick those questions up and we'll probably save them up for Nick um, after we've had a chat. And uh, but if you've got any questions that aren't directly for Nick, then someone on the team will probably answer those. Okay, right, brilliant. So let me introduce Nick. Uh, so Nick is um, here from the farm. Um, so if you're in the UK, uh, like I am, then the farm needs no introduction. They're one of the kind of giant, well, most established audio post houses um, in the country, um, working on a lot of you know, mainstream entertainment and drama for uh, all the major networks and streaming services here. Um, so that's half of the team there. Uh, sorry if you're one of the half that didn't get in the picture. Um, Nick, there's just a quick headshot of Nick there who, and some of the things he's been working on um, and some of his award nominations. Um, and what I'll do just quickly, just to set the scene before uh, we bring Nick in, I have actually, I've actually got um, the farm lockdown showreel, some of the stuff they've been working on um, in the recent months. And I'm just gonna play you a little bit of that um now hopefully you will see this the video might be a bit choppy but uh, we'll do our best sorry about the cardboard desk let's start with some nostalgia oh yeah we're back in business baby oh yeah we're back in business baby check this out and let's bring on the talent <laughs> Welcome to our first show. Oh, I miss you. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the show. Run, Bobby! I'm Jay Lyson, and I've got your back. Fucking hell, man. When I 
I've seen people standing next to it on the news, it sort of comes up to their waist. How's that going to get up the nose? Leave me alone, Joe Wicks. You can't make me exercise, no matter how handsome you are. Are you, or have you ever been a doctor? No. We're here to talk about art. Stay home, stay safe. <laughs> OK. Let's pop back to you there. All right, Nick. Hello. <laughs> can we hear Hello. you? <laughs> Hello, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. So thanks ever so much for Excellent. joining us. So That's OK. We're... Pleasure. Where I know, whereabouts are you? You look like you're at work, but I'm actually at home currently. I'm actually in my loft, which is my uh, lockdown studio that I've been in since uh, since March. Um, been going into work once, kind of once a week, um, but, but pretty much for the first sort of month, I was based up in my loft. Um, we we shipped a lot of sh systems home pretty quickly to about eight mixers um, just before lockdown happened, and I was lucky enough to get a get a system for my my loft nice yeah we could probably spend the whole thing talking about that but, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, it was an interesting time yeah still is right so, and still is yeah still yeah is. but uh, people are back in at the main facility doing stuff now yeah. uh yes they have we, we've we've had people throughout lockdown working in like in, in the facilities they they remained open obviously all COVID secure and everything, but um, it was, it's, yeah, uh, we got as many people out as we could just to reduce the footfall through the, through the facilities. But there has been a kind of core of guys going in all, all the time. The ones that live near to work were obviously much easier for them to get into, in, in, into Soho without having to travel. So uh, those guys were, were, have been brilliant and kept, you know, kept the facility going, which has been fantastic with us swanning around at home. Cool. Cool. So, um, Maybe you could just um, introduce yourself here, what your role is at the farm and who the farm is. I think everyone in the UK knows you guys, but we have an international audience. So, Sure. Um, well, I've been at the farm for 20 years now. Um, I've been head of audio at the farm for the last, I think, about four years. Um, the farm, we've uh, quite a large um, group of companies. We've got three sites across the UK. Um, we've got a site in Manchester. Uh, a site in Bristol and a site in London, which has uh, three different sites actually in London. Um, all the facilities we have offer full post production, so picture, offline picture, and audio. Um, and we have currently got four Atmos rooms in the uh, in the group as well. So we have one in Manchester, and we've got three uh, full uh, home certified uh, studios in London as well. Um, we um, yeah, we, we we do post for we, we we do post across the board. So we do scripted, non-scripted, a bit of everything. As myself as well, and and entertainment. Currently, we've we've got um, uh, Britain's Got Talent about to start going through, and various dramas we've been doing, and we've been doing all this through lockdown as well. Through you know, com as I said before, a combination of people's homes, people going into the facility, and we've we've kept going. It's been it's been a, it's been hard work, but, but really quite rewarding. Yeah, yeah. So, and you personally, I know you're head of audio, but you are still mixing most of the time. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Well yeah, yeah. I, I predominantly I mix all the time. Yeah, I, I, I uh, I'm generally mixing whilst trying to answer lots of emails. That's tend to be what I, what I'm, what I'm trying to do constantly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, we, I, I share. The, there's two of us that kind of run audios. Myself and Nigel Edwards, and we kind of run it together because it's, it's, we've got. About uh, 25 people in our team, so it's there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of audio work going through across all the sites as well, across Manchester, Bristol, and London. Um, and there's a lot of questions constantly. So between the two of us, we can we can you know we can we, we mix full time and we can run you know, run the department as well. But it's pretty busy. Yeah, that's awesome. And so when did you guys start moving into Atmos mixing? Was it something that you were getting asked for? It um, suddenly just um, rocketed. We were, I think it was a couple of years ago, we, were, we, we put it in. We were, um, Netflix approached us about doing a series about Formula One. Um, other, another series were bubbling around, but, but, but um, the first series of Formula One Drive to Survive came around and Netflix were really keen for us to do it. We'd already we'd already looked into getting Atmos. Uh, my, myself and Ant Kirkland, our senior audio engineer, uh, 
we'd already looked into it, working how we were going to do it, how the studios could could be uh, tweaked to uh, to accommodate Atmos, technically how we would do it, uh, how we would roll it into our workflows at the farm. Uh, and we kind of uh, got Dolby on board very early on uh, because then it was all very new to them as well. They weren't quite sure how it was going to work for the home Atmos certification. It hadn't been hadn't been launched yet. It was kind of a, a work in progress on a bit of paper. I think you know Dolby would quite agree with that. It was it was all still very early days. But between us, we kind of got together, worked out a plan, and before about about a month before we were due to start the series, uh, I, I I got in touch with Scott Kramer at Netflix, and between us, we kind of uh, we all worked out how we were going to do it. Netflix were also kind of working out their formats, how they wanted Atmos to sound, how they wanted it to be delivered, what the deliverables were going to be, how we were going to deliver to them, uh, how it needed to sound, the, the, how, the formats. We did some tests, got the studios built quite quickly, got Dolby around, had them set up, uh, certified. Uh, and then it was a case of going through the process and, and working out with, with, with Scott and the guys at Netflix, you know, what, what the format was and how we were going to deliver it. During that time, we, I decided we're very, because there's so many mixers at the farm, it's really important that we have templates. Uh, we call them bolt-ons. Uh, so that any member of all the audio staff can pick up a session uh, and open it up and print out stems or do tweaks or mixes. It's really important because we, 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 yeah, we move sessions around a lot. So I wanted to keep that, I wanted to bring that through the whole Atmos process as well. I wanted you know, any of the guys with a quick lesson to be able to pick up an Atmos session and have, and have a go. That was that was what I was really keen from just to have a go. So that that was kind of the, one of the first things we did was sat down and worked out how we were going to make it available for everyone. Right. Yeah. So so did you adapt your existing rooms for that? Or you know how much? How we yeah was that? we had. It was it was it, it was interesting. We have adapted uh, all our existing rooms. We didn't build any new rooms for this at all. It was a combination of again getting getting Dolby round and, and in, in collaboration with Scrub as well, HHB in London, getting them round and working out how what, what kit needed to go in. Um, Dolby were brilliant; they would come around and understand that we yeah, we can't throw loads of money at this. We need to the rooms need to work within a budget, so they would come round, work out the best ways of doing things. We would you know tweak and change things here and there. The design process was great as well. We would sit down with them work out which speakers we could put on the ceilings because some of our studios aren't that high so we had to use these very flush ceiling mounted speakers which are you know actually look really cool now um so those in a combination with other speakers around the room and we came up with a kind of seven seven one four system which which works really well and sits in our all our studios and you know obviously sounds great um it was it was a really good process it was a really good learning a very steep learning curve for us all yeah uh, and I think including Dolby as well, and um, and uh, and everyone else involved. But uh, but what was brilliant, yeah, you know, we we were very lucky to have uh, three studios, yeah, you know, very early on in the whole process uh, to to be able to do you know quite a lot of Atmos work quite quickly. Yeah, and I think you guys would definitely had those rooms done before it was all ironed out by Dolby as well. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We we were. Yeah, I, I think the first season we had the we had, we finished the rooms. I think from memory, I think it was the end of August, and then I started mixing <clears throat> two series for Netflix. Uh, it was a, a series called Turn Up Charlie, which was a scripted uh, comedy drama with I Idris Elba in it for them. And then on the hot, hot off the back of that, we were then doing the first series of Formula One Drive to Survive. So these were both being delivered in Atmos, uh, both you know with very steep learning curves to work out how we were going to do it. Um, yeah. and deliver them on time as well and on budget and get it all done so everyone's happy. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was incredibly, incredibly rewarding and good fun yeah. to yeah. Uh, to get it all working. It really was. But it was, yeah, it was a lot of jumping around. I remember when we were doing Turn Up Charlie, we were sending mixes up to our Manchester facility to, to finish off the M&Es, the Atmos M&E mixing, because I was still mixing the series. They wanted to deliver to Netflix. So we... Yeah, it was. But that's how that's how the farm works. You know, we can move things around very efficiently and you know, across the across the group. Uh, and, and and Atmos was no different. You know, things had to move up to Manchester so the guys could do an mini up there. It worked really well. Yeah. No, I know you guys have a. You know, you like to template hardware and software mm. and make sure that everyone's using the same uh, systems Absolutely. and Absolutely. move things around. Yeah. Um, and we can. Yeah, I know you sent me a couple of diagrams, and it'd be good to look yeah. at. Yeah. Get into that kind of sticky stuff um and then you already also mentioned a few things that i know i want to know about like um uh, you know what the deliverables are what 
Netflix, for example, expect, you know, what, what it's supposed to sound like at the, uh, at home when the viewer's watching it. But, um, before I get into that, I'm just kind of curious how different it is when you've got an Atmos mix is it approached differently to how you mixed before, or is it more or less the same process that's been adapted? It's a similar, it's, it's a similar process. You are, you're, you're, it, as with other, as with surround mixing, you know, in five one or seven one, you are <clears throat> the thing to do is to use the, the 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 speakers above you as an effect speaker, and not to use them all the time. As it, it became, we learned quite early on, that it becomes a bit of a mush if you just fill the fill the space with sound. Um, the and the down mixes work really well as well. The down mixes are so much more precise uh, and 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 sound fabulous when you compare to. We, we did some tests early on, mix something in five one, and then mix it in in, in Atmos. Uh, and the re-renders or the down mixes, uh, which is what, what which is what they call in the Atmos world, uh, the the clarity and the, and the the definition was 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 brilliant. So it was a, a really good way of doing you know mixing in Atmos to even just just to create get get great down mixes was was really good. Yeah, no, that's it's very interesting. I've heard a few people say that. So actually, I think that yeah. probably answers um, the question from my colleague Sri in Dubai. He sent over saying to ask where the down mixes were coming from for stereo, whether they were coming direct from Atmos or yeah, they, using they, the Yeah, they're all coming straight out of the, out of the RMU. So you can see that the RMU is constantly spitting out these, these uh, uh, down mixes or the what they call in the Atmos land is, is re-renders. Uh, and it's constantly spitting those out. Or you, you can set all, that, all those up beforehand in the configs of the RMU, which is again what we've done. So we have templates that will coincide with the the input configurations on the RMU. So we know we're constantly hearing back a 7-1 down mix, a 5-1 down mix, uh, all the stems as well we can listen to and all the 2.0 and all its down mixes and all its stems. All, you, know, you can monitor these all, all at the same time, you know, listen to them individually. Uh, ultimately clients still want to hear the mix in stereo and they still want yeah. to hear it in 5-1. So it's, it's, it's really important that you're hearing those co constantly, which is what the RMU lets you do. Otherwise, you know, you, it's, it, you can all sit back and you know do an, a fabulous Atmos mix. You know, pat each other on the back and go, "Great job, guys!" Uh, and if you haven't listened to it in stereo, you, yeah. know, you might get a shock because ultimately we are mixing for TV, so it's got to work on a telly in stereo uh, in people's front rooms. That's that, that's that, the important thing. That was my next question, actually: is how do you check that? Do you have like a kind of domestic soundbar or TV systems? Yeah, stuff we um, very early on we found some. Um, some sound bars, which actually they hang on the side of the TV and on the back of them has a, uh, a reasonable sub. So the, the TV sound we have is a, is a reasonable, reasonably good sound. It's not, a, it's not a full on sound bar sound, but it's a good, a good TV sound. I've always tried to make the studios kind of, you know, the TV monitoring kind of in the middle. So, you know, you can only, you can only pick, you can only pick something to, cause everyone's TVs are at home are different. They listen to it on TVs, they listen to it on, um, PCs and listen to it on their iPads, their phones. So you can, all you can do is try to aim in the middle and hope that what you're producing at least will 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 stack up across all those different formats. That that that's how we do it. So it's it's a reasonable TV monitoring system we've got in the studios. And that, and again, we as you know as we what we do for most of the farm, those TVs are in every single studio we have, and there are all right. the systems are identical. So we can move a session around, uh, and every if a client goes in a different room. They're not going to sound different. They're going to hear on the same TV with the same speakers and go, oh, yeah, that is consistent. That's really important. Otherwise, they'll hear on a different TV and it'll sound different again and again, and you'll be constantly, yeah, yeah. constantly chasing your tail. So, um, yeah, in terms of you were talking about down mixing and how it's kind of seems to mixing speaking within Atmos seems to produce a nice down mix. Um, and I know that you were working on uh, the last igloo. I wanted to ask you yes. about the documentary film um, <clears throat> yeah. as, a, as, a, as a kind of commission that was primarily destined for stereo, is that right? But you worked on it in Atmos. It was, it was, um, it was commissioned by the BBC as a, a 90 minute special about uh, a chap that lives in, in Greenland. And it's, it was a, yeah, mainly about the Greenland and the environment and how it's melting. And so the brief, from the BBC was to, you know, it has to be very uh, sound led. So there's very, there's very little dialogue in it. It was very, you know, he, obviously speaking his, his native tongue. So there's very little dialogue. It's more about the environment, the sounds and, and obviously the pictures. 
So it was commissioned in stereo. I, we had to sit down with the director and the sound recordist, and the sound recordist was really keen to use some ambisonics recordings. We were chatting away, and also mentioned by the BBC was ASMR, so that, that sound you get and it gives you the tingles and the, the, the uh, your hair, yeah, your hair stand up on your on your arms and stuff. So they were really keen to get that, and I said, well, it'd be a great opportunity to mix something in Atmos. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sure the distributors would be keen on that as well because it's kind of future-proofing the program, you know, future-proofing the film. Uh, and yeah, everyone was cool. Wow, this is a really good idea. I gave, played them some of the Formula One that we'd mixed and some, some Riviera and some of the sort of demos I've been playing with. And, and they thought this is just a great idea, a really good idea. The sound, this, yeah, the, the program really lends itself to this, this yeah, real if there, uh, sound of, you know, from Atmos. And 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 we decided to do it in Atmos. I think they got some more money from the from the um, uh, you know, yeah from the, the worldwide worldwide sales, and, and uh, we mixed in Atmos. It was a a great process to mix it in Atmos. Uh, then listen to the down mixes in stereo. Uh, they were thrilled. They were absolutely really thrilled with the with the process. It, it makes you work harder as well, uh, as with the jump from just mixing in stereo to that jump uh, up into five one. It makes you work harder. You can position things around the room more. You're thinking about the sound more. And when you do that, your down mixes sound better because you, you have, it forces you to work harder rather than just being a bit, you know, a bit lazy and keeping everything in the center. So yeah, the film, we were really happy with the film. The clients loved it. They even booked a screening in the Soho Atmos theater. To, I, <laughs> the saw, yeah, Atmos I theater saw that there was <laughs> showings of it. Yeah, so it was well worth doing, yeah. It was well worth um, doing, and obviously the distributor was chuffed because they had a, a full delivery in Atmos as well, so they were very happy. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, we've got um, people are kind of sending in a few questions, kind of related to what you're saying. Um, should we dive into a couple of those? Get into the weeds. Uh, sure. It's uh, so um, yeah. I'll jump in with this one. You're talking about your uh, TV speaker systems that kind of hang on the side. Uh, yeah. of the TV and someone was asking about the kind of pan width and how you judge that if you've got speakers outside of your TV screen. Um, I guess that they are, has always they, been they, they something are, to consider. They are literally up against the edge of the telly. So it's not like they're further out from the telly. They are, they are actually fixed to the side of the, of the TV. So it gives you a little bit more width. Uh, it is a great way of watching stuff back and checking that it's, you know, the imaging is correct. They're not like standing up, you know, meters away from the TV. They are actually attached to the side of the TV. So it's it's like having a, a TV with some decent speakers that like we used to have in the old right. days when TVs yeah. were, were big and had proper speakers attached to the side of them. It gives us that feel back again. But um, they, they, they still feel part of the TV. And the sub is yeah. behind the TV, so you don't see the sub and you only, you only give it a slight feel of the sub. Uh, a couple more studio build questions. Um... So someone asked, "Is um, were your height speakers is from the same manufacturer as your LCRs and surrounds?" And did, is that uh, yes, we um, we have used Genelex um, all all around the studios. Uh, all our rooms um, have Genelex active monitoring speakers in them. Across again across all the farm sites, all the farm studios have have uh, Genelex, uh, and so again and again when you when you do a certified studio, Dolby make you you they they specify which speakers you have to do, which, which speak which side speakers you have in which positions. So you are you you are led by them. You you, you have to put in yeah. what they ask you to put in. Otherwise, you can't get the certification. Right. So they specified they 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 specified the size of speakers, but we wanted to use Genelex, so they just told us which ones to use. Okay. Uh, someone's asked if you're folding down from 5.1 or Atmos, but I think you already answered that. Um, it's from the Atmos, right? So, um, and we've already got two questions about loudness, so I guess we should rip that blaster off straight away. <laughs> <laughs> it's always plenty of one of the most things I get asked about is loudness. It's, it's, yeah, um, I bet. Um, yeah, so, so, someone's asked, said. Um, it's actually Mike Ayton, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, hi, said, hi there, Mike. Yeah, hi, Mike. Um, said, how are you handling dynamic range constraints with Netflix, who got a dialogue of minus 27 compared to R128, etc.? How do you get through that forest? 
So for loudness, uh, I'm sure everyone's aware, Netflix use a dialogue target of minus 27. So rather than all UK broadcasters ask you to do minus 23, but as an overall loudness. So it's, you, you, you can't have a very loud section uh, with loads of dialogue in it because it'll make you, it, the, the, the program will do this. It will be very loud, very quiet. Ultimately, you could still get an average, but it won't be consistent for the viewer. Netflix's, Netflix's view was, okay, we, we want to use the, the, uh, the dialogue as the anchor. So we want the dialogue to always be consistent. And that's what they want mixes to make sure is consistently 27. So you are, you are constantly checking the, the, the um, dialogue loudness and checking it's around 27. Now I tend to mix, I know on my studio uh, what my volume level needs to be. And when I'm mixing for Netflix, I will turn it up so it's a bit louder. Otherwise I'll, I tend to mix the, the programs too loud. Similarly, when I'm mixing for R128, uh, the studio gets turned down. I right. get, I can, I, yeah, my, my, my hearing, it, it can be so sensitive, I can mix it within a dB. So if I, if I know I'm monitoring at the right level, I know it'll roughly be right. I always, we always have, we, we use um, uh, Nugent Vizalem to do our, our loudness yeah. monitoring with. Uh, and we also have R2W meters as well in the studios, which give us a loudness reading. I always keep an, I always keep an eye on them, as you would any metering, but I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not locked into them all the time. Um, once I've set up a level in my head and in the room, I can generally match that level. Yeah. Um, the great thing, uh, the difference, the difference is with the Netflix uh, loudness spec is you can be a bit more, you, you can get a bit more creative with some explosions, some music scenes. They aren't going to drag your overall loudness down, which is what right. happens with R128. So you can have a bit more fun with it. Again, yeah, you need to, you need to remember it is for telly, so you don't want people riding out their remote controls all the time, but you can have a bit more fun with the mix, as we did in Drive to Survive. Yeah, there are some, I'm sure people are aware there's some loud bangs and booms in that, which the clients wanted. They wanted a bit more cinematic, and Netflix were, you know, were happy with that. But again, I, I, I'm, I'm very aware that it's, it's for telly, so you know, I've, you know, we've all had, I've had children, and the last thing you want is watching the TV yeah. downstairs, and there's huge booms and bangs and um, waking everyone up. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's keeping it in check. But that, that's generally how we, yeah, and the loudness is measured from a, a um, from an Atmos mix. We would listen, We our, our templates have the re-renders coming back into them. And on the 5.1 return, I will have a, a Nugent uh, Vizalen meter constantly measuring the loudness. That's how Netflix specify you to measure the loudness of an Atmos mix. It's basically on the 5.1 re-render. Right. Okay, I've, I've got a diagram here. I might be worth showing your kind of setup. Um, you know, we've got quite a few technical questions coming in. Um, yeah. yeah, people asking about your template and how you set stuff up. Um, I might just put just hold a hold on those for a second because I just did want to. I just ask you about the kind of higher level workflow before I got to that stuff. Um, so you know, in terms of a project, when when do you start thinking about Atmos? Does it come through the track layer and editing? stage or is it all done in the mix stage? Um, it does we um depending on what the show is something like drive to survive is incredibly busy and has a lot of sound added to it and uh an, you know, a really busy track lay so james evans our sound designer supremo he he would track lay that again we we we're still tracking <laughs> our existing five one rooms but what we did was we would frig the the bolt on we have so he would kind of listen to it, it listen to it in seven one one kind of thing as long as he heard the seven one bit of it we were happy he would um th then it just would transfer better into our into our templates and go into the studios better um whenever he whenever there's an object that he's keen to move around the room or have height he would put that on separate tracks all our objects are kept on separate tracks so uh, they go through the whole mix process that enables uh the mixer to see what is specifically an object and what is going to the bed also, when you're mm -hmm. correcting for loudness, you want to make sure that you are pulling down everything in your session, not just the stuff that go into buses, but also your objects, because otherwise you can mistakenly just pull down your buses to correct any volume changes for loudness and forget to do your objects. So if, you, if, if the objects are clearly labeled um, and we, we make them bright orange as well, so we know they're objects, you can then group everything together and put it down for loudness. Right. This, no, this that's, is, that's, yeah, this, this, this that is kind of our template, yeah. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but I have actually just shared the uh, template yes, diagram that's that you just sent. popped up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I guess that's a sort of high level view of how you structure a mix. So you're separate. Yeah, this out. is a very a very basic kind of overview of our templates that we use at the farm for for Atmos. So we've got our tracks here on the far left. They can be obviously they're a mixture of dialogue tracks, effects track, music tracks. Uh, we can decide. I will decide whether I want to send them to um, a, a bed or a, the, the buses in this instance. So those those buses are seven one two wide. Um, they Does that will then go the dialogue to as well. Someone's asked if your dialogue bus is seven one two or. I do. I, I actually do keep it seven. Yeah, I do keep it seven one two wide. Again, it's more for templating and for doing all the down mixing and deliverables. We've we have kept it seven one two wide. Um, it, and uh, again, that was from me building the very first uh, template right back two years ago. I think if I built it again, um, I would probably just make it maybe five one or even th you know, even um, right. three. So you, you tend not to. But again, if it's left at seven one two, then you've got the option to move things around. It's it's um we learned very on. It's 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 a lot easier to have the template that does everything and to try and sure. you know build things whilst you're trying to do it. It's a bit of a nightmare. Plus the fact then someone else picks it up, they're not familiar with it, they don't know it, it then breaks and it just becomes a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, yeah. It's easier to kind of build these constraints in and everyone, everyone's used to working to them and they, it works really well. Um, so those, so those, those 712 buses will then feed to the outputs to the RMU. Uh, they're all obviously 712 wide, except the objects, which, will, which are obviously monos and a, com and a combination of stereos. They'll go to the RMU and then they'll come back as re-render returns from the RMU into the session, which we have the those returns. Uh, we keep them on input so we can hear the returns all the time. Okay. Um, and they they, so and they, they, they feed our speakers to our telly. Gotcha. Right. Okay. This is good. You're answering some of the questions that are coming up without me having to ask them. It's just very uh, e economical. So um, <laughs> looking at this, <laughs> you're only um, using objects for effects. Is that right? From this template? No, that's just, I, that's just, I, I ran out of room. I, I mean, we, uh, I oh, okay. used objects so you'd for everything, repeat actually. That for... Yeah, you'd, 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 you'd kind of repeat that for, for your music objects as well, and for, and for dialogue as well, and for voiceover. Um, for, for Formula One, we do, uh, we do, we do make uh, voiceover, uh, sorry, dialogue objects. Everything that's in the car, when the guys are chatting in the car to the pits or to the, uh, to the other guys, we put the, the, the all the radio chat in the middle of the room, so it gives. If you're listening to it in Atmos at home, you get this kind of great feeling of them being in the car with them. Right, Similarly, right, all the effects are, are 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 given some height. Um, I, that's one of the things I noticed on Twitter when people listen to. It, they're going, "Oh, I love the I love the guys sitting in their cars, and you can hear the the the, the, the talk, the, the the radio chat in, in the middle of the room." Uh, we did that very early on. Uh, Steve, the, one of the other mixers, discovered that, and. Um, you, as long as you're aware that you, again, as long as you check the mix down, that the, the the mix down is going to yeah. work because it does. When you give dialogue some height, we have noticed that the mix down can be slightly lower. So you just got to keep an eye on that and make sure you don't lose your, lose your dialogue. Um, right. But no, that, that that isn't just effects objects. That that is everything. I, I tend to send everything now. In the early days, I was just sending effects. But as you get more and more creative and and used to the systems, you tend to send everything and, and have a go with everything because it's. Yeah. Also, it doesn't matter. You're just, yeah, it's an object. Have, have, yeah, have fun with it. So, so yeah, is there any other sort of particular advantages to using objects that you're taking advantage of? Is it mainly kind of creative positioning? Uh, I've, I, it's positioning the, 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 the clarity. You get, you get a lot more clarity and definition moving things around the room. A lot of the mixers, when we started doing Atmos, were saying, oh, I'm not really keen. I'm, I don't think I'm going to bother with Atmos. It's, yeah, it's a bit too much to learn. I don't see the point of it. But once they pan something around the room in 5.1, then switch to an Atmos pan, and you, 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 you are really quite surprised by the clarity. And, and it, it does move around the room. Because it is object-based, you are moving it around the room as coordinates rather than from channel to channel. There's a, an, an incredible difference. Uh, and similarly, with moving atmospheres around the room, moving you know, effects around the room, anything around the room, is, it makes a huge difference. It hasn't all got to be about the height thing. It's also about the clarity of the of the the object based audio. That that that's mm -hmm. the key. It, it's object based audio, not channel based. And once you get that, it's 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 amazing. Really cool. A great a great a great format to work in. I, I love every job that comes in Atmos. I'm, I can't wait to do it. 
That's, so yeah, it's really great fun to work with, isn't it? That's, that is uh, it's really great fun. Not yeah, an once, insignificant once... factor. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's actually really good fun. Once you've worked out the technicalities and you've got that in your head and you're happy with the technically how you're going to do it and, and work, get the workflow through your facility or your home or, home or wherever you are, the actual mixing of it is, is, is really good fun. Yeah, because you can have some great fun with it. And um, as I said, it just it, it sounds so much better. It really does. It's, it's a great it's a great format. And, and it's scalable, you know, from, from a 714 system up to a theatre system up to all the different speakers rather than it just being channel based it's object based which is which is the key which is really yeah, important yeah right i have tons of questions are kind of streaming in here so right, okay <laughs> well on the i'm trying to lump them into like uh subjects but so we're kind of while we're on the pro tools template side um yeah how well, a couple actually what are you doing in terms of kind of compressors and things like that are you using those on object do you have like a sort of separate series of buses um, for for affecting we, individual objects we haven't done that actually we uh, very early on all, all our beds have a limiter on them that's set to minus three we use a, a pro limiter added pro limiter all, across all the beds that that helps with most of the uh, uh loudness at the top we we didn't we, we, we never have uh put uh, limiters across all the outputs across all the objects we've just tried to keep an eye on it I figure if you're if you're pushing something that loud, then it's probably not right. So we've, I've kind of taught the mixes to keep an eye on it. Um, and and you, 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 if, if you, you can't control, if, if you've got three sounds that are uh, at minus three, once they combine in the RMU, they're probably gonna hit zero. So there's nothing you can do about that. Um, Netflix has said that, most people accept you can't control okay. that. But you can keep an eye on it and you can control it. Um, I think if you're if you're banging constantly at zero, you know, into into zero with all your objects, they're probably really loud anyway, um, and probably going to be taking people's heads off at home. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, just tracking these coming in. Um, similarly, actually, um, uh, I see your question, Sam Millie. I'll answer that in a second. Um, but yeah, the um, reverbs is my question i always ask and a couple yeah. of people have already asked that it, it yeah how do you handle reverbs with objects we're still using uh five one reverbs we haven't jumped into the realm of seven one twos and all the other we, i think there's some available now they weren't even available when we were we started mixing so kind of all my uh all the all the templates we've got still using five one uh the the reverbs will still will just go to a bed. So unfortunately, they'll stay as uh, channel-based reverbs, five one seven one, whichever one you want to use. Right. I, we've tended to use five one reverbs still. Uh, they sound okay, and they, they they sound good. I mean, when maybe this year for, for, for Drive to Survive, we'll have a look around, and see what what other other plugins are available now in in the uh, in the seven one two world for reverbs. Uh, but up up until this point, we haven't. And, and and not needed to, but but uh, and they and they weren't available. But we will certainly look look to what's what's out there. So if you had an what's object that's now? an object that's sending to a reverb, does the reverb return into the the bed? It doesn't you don't Correct. have kind of specific objects for a reverb or anything? No, 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 no. The the, the, the it will return through the bed. Yeah. So again, cool. I'm for, yeah, it, it is it is compromises. In fact, it is just a five one reverb or a seven one reverb. But generally, that works pretty well. I mean, if, you, if you're returning, you could return, we do return mono reverb sometimes and we'll move them around as a, we'll link them to the sound. So they will move around as an object around the room. But if it's a generic room Atmos uh, reverb, then it'll be, it'll be tied to the channels. So 5.1 or 7.1 yeah. pipe based. So uh, sort of a similar thing. Someone's asked, you know, if you're sending a dialogue object um, out, how does that make it back into the dialogue stem when you deliver? Is that... Is that why you have in the, yeah. beds? Yeah. So in the RMU, we have set up a all our. You, you could you, when you when you're creating your your I/O configuration in the RMU, you make sure it matches your template. So our template, as you've seen, has voiceovers, dialogues, effects, and music in it. Uh, similarly, our input configuration in the RMU will have exactly the same voiceover dial music and effects beds uh and and busing as well when you create an object or a uh, a track in in the rmu you can tag it as a dialogue as an effect 
as a, um, a bit of music. So the RMU knows to put that back into the down mix. It, it's tagged that it's a new bit of music or a bit of dialogue. The RMU go, oh, this is, this is a bit of, uh, this is an object, but it is tagged as a dialogue track. So I know to, to, to route this back down into the, uh, the dialogue we renders. That's how it works. It's really Genius. clever, really, really yeah. very neat. But again, it's, it's, really, it's crucial to get all this set up beforehand. I, I think I spent probably two weeks um, getting all this set up before we started mixing anything. I spent two weeks in the studio designing, building our templates, making sure the RMUs matched. We have separate um, templates for, for drama and, and separate ones for, for, for documentaries um, because they both need different things. Um, and it's crucial that your RMU setup matches the, your, your, your um, templates. If they don't, it, you know, it becomes a bit of a mess. Yeah, um, but it's a very neat system. It's a really neat system. And for TV, you know, for, for the film guys, they tend to send everything out of just one bed. So they'll have mm -hmm. one bed and everything else will be an object. Um, and that's fine if you've got three, four weeks to do all your versioning afterwards. But in TV land, we all know we've got a day probably. So you, know, you, you need to be able to make your deliverables pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've just thrown up your kind of hardware diagram because uh, yeah, I've had a few people asking if you're using a separate RMU or, and if you ever used the software renderer and um, yeah, so this, this is, is your this kind is of drama our, setup. Is it? This is, this is actually our hardware setup for every room. All, all the rooms right. are the same. All our Atmos rooms use this setup. Now this, this is, again, this is two years old now. So you can actually, I've been told today actually by Ant, you can actually do away with his second matrix box. I was going to um, say that. New, yeah, yeah. You can you can, you can buy a card now for the for the uh, for the Matrix, which gives you uh, another two two digi links. Um, but in the days when we did this, they weren't available, so you had to use two Matrix boxes. That's but right, if you yeah. if you kind of ignore those now, it, it's it's a very simple system and it's very neat and elegant. Um, we were very lucky, and luckily at the farm, our, our our facility, the main farm facility, we actually put Matrix boxes in anyway, so we had them already in the studio so it was quite easy to add another one in and to add an rmu in but yeah all, all our studios all our mixing studios um have an rmu we do use the production suite to generate to generate all the stems from but um but all the mixing studios have an rmu that, that was decided very early on as a, as a, as a sort of group decision to, to have rmus in the studios yeah it makes sense uh, definitely yeah yeah um i've got Tons of questions I could keep asking you, but I'm going to stop uh, because a lot of questions have come in. Um, so I think I wonder. Ah, Dave, I was just going to say I can I'm join. losing track of questions. So no, and so I'm kind of trying to uh, keep track of questions and not really listening to you so much. So um, you may have answered these already, but there's quite a lot coming in about the RMU. So I think lots of questions about uh, which rooms. Uh, have you know the production suite where you're using the um, home theater RMU, whether you might be using a theatrical RMU. So maybe uh, if you could sort of dive into that a little bit, that would be that would cover a lot of the sure. questions that are coming in. So all our studios are home entertainment only. We don't do theatrical at all at the farm. We uh, only have home entertainment, but they're all all certified home entertainment systems. We have the when you buy an RMU, it comes with a number of production suite licenses. So we have put the production suite in all our other studios. So if one of the studios is, is too busy to, to bounce out some stems, we can send the, um, the Atmos session to uh, one of the production suites uh, and they can just bounce out the stems, limit them, bring them to Pro Tools, limit them, name them, and then bounce them out as deliverables. Um, but we tend to try and do everything in the, in the Atmos rooms where possible. But yeah, when it gets busy and you know, sort of around now through to the end, end, of, end of March, it gives us it gives us the opportunity to move things around if we need to but we only mix in the, in the rmu studios at the moment good good so i think that covers a fair few of those which is good um actually there was if you've seen any spotted any simon that you want to uh, jump in with uh Yes, um, quite a few loudness, a few on kind of general setups. Uh, oh, there was one really good question actually, which uh, let's see if I can scroll back to it because I want to credit the asker. But someone I can't find who who wrote it now, but someone said, "What's your favourite Atmos mix that you've heard that wasn't 
a farm mix. Just putting you on the spot there. Oh, what was it? There was a film done for Netflix. Oh, I can't remember what it was called now. Um, and it sounded incredible. Um, leave, leave it with me. I, I will remember what the film was called. It was, it was a Netflix only film and it was, it sounded amazing. Um, it wasn't one of the big Hollywood films, but it was a, a yeah. smaller film. I think, it, uh, yeah, leave with me. I remember what the film name was, but it, it's, yeah, I've, there, there's more and more, there's more and more Atmos appearing in cinemas and there needs to be more. It's, you know, it's, it's slowly taking, it's slowly picking off in films um, and more and more cinemas are getting it installed, but I'd love to hear more films in Atmos because it's a, it is a great format in, in, a, in a cinema. It really is. Yeah, it's quite, it's actually quite depressing how few films I've seen in Atmos. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hard to find them. Um, it's I get some, I go to some screenings and you know they they can be in Atmos, but it's again it's very rare to get them in Atmos. It's um, we need we need more 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 films in Atmos, and more screens that show Atmos. That's, that's my that's problem. The, that's yeah, the I'm, I'm yeah. In the I suppose in the it's investment, isn't it? It's 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 it's, it's a bit of money they got to spend, so it's it's it, it'll come. It'll come. So a uh, question that popped up there was: Do you? Um, are you automating your bus object routing uh, in Protos Mixer or are you using separate tracks? We're using separate tracks. So very early on, I, I did some test mixing and mainly for loudness, actually. If you do automate your bus um, object button, you, are, you, you, you can't then pull everything down uh, from loudness so we very early on decided to keep objects on separate tracks and they are allocated as objects only um, because say your program is 2 dB too loud you need to group all your uh, bed buses together and you'll then need to group all your objects together create a VCA and pull right. everything down by 2 dB to make it the right loudness if you've got tracks that are going between object and um, object in the bed when they jump to an object they're not going to get pulled down because they're right. going to jump out of the bed into an object and the vca won't catch them so yeah right. so you need to you, use you, like you, master you, faders or another you, you, yeah. kind of line of routing yeah yeah you, you, yeah there's even a master fader yeah your objects aren't going to go via the master fader so you've, you've got to vca them there's no other way of doing it or mix it exactly to the, to the right number <laughs> <laughs> on a sort of related note actually do you get asked for any uh dipped uh stems from an atmos uh, we haven't work? yet but yeah. that's that has been mentioned it's a similar um, issue i guess it's yeah uh, it's, it's similar with it's very it, there's no easy way at the moment i mean I'm, I'm chatting to dolby a lot about this there's no easy way to create um a DM and E, so a mix minus narration either. So if you do a final mix in a, a, an Atmos final mix with a narration, um, you cannot, as you would do in a normal session, you know, have your 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 mix minus narration stemming off onto another output. Unfortunately, in an RMU, your final mix is your final mix. You have to close that all down, create a, you know, save your session as you know, save it as mix minus narration, and then play out, turn off your voiceover. Make it turn your dip fader off so it doesn't dip, and then play out a whole new uh, uh, play out to the RMU as a mix right, minus direction. Right. There's currently there's 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 lots of ways we're thinking of doing it, but at the moment there's no easy way of doing it. So unfortunately, that does tend to add another play out to your deliverables, um, which is a yeah can be a bit of a pain. But as long as you fact that in right from the beginning and you're aware of that, you know you've got to make it and another set of deliverables from that as well. Then that's the only trouble. So I've got, there's a couple more come in a um, couple of times. So uh, first of all, any thoughts on projector stroke large screen versus television setup uh, with midfield large speakers versus a small and near field? So in other words, I guess, you know, uh, mixing for, you know, for movies versus television. So with the screen allowing for the center to be placed inside the image whilst the television needs a neck craned up, um, yeah. Well, so how do you deal with the sort of, I guess, those differences between, you know, the fact that speakers in a TV are going to be placed outside of the, you know, the picture environment, whereas obviously they're kind of in, uh, embedded in the screen in a, in a movie theatre? Um, well, again, we're mixing for TV, so we're not mixing for movies. So we are 
all, all our studios are, 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 near, are, are um, near field studios. None of them are theatrical studios. So they're all, they're all sized appropriately. Um, and ultimately, as I said right at the beginning, we are mixing for TV. So it has to work on the telly, um, first and foremost. And, and all the broadcasters will, will agree with that. You know, we, we are mixing for TV, so it has to work on the TV. Um, so the size of our rooms and the size of the TV, the TVs that we're using, I can't remember what size TVs we have now, but they're only about 50 inches. They're not vast TVs. Um, and they have these speakers at the side of them. So it gives a, a reasonable stereo image for you to listen to and check if it's working. I think that's what they're asking. Is, it, is that what they're asking? I think so, yeah. Um, another one, which is a much more general question, but you, they want to know about some of the, uh, the biggest pitfalls you've found um, working with Atmos to stereo fold down. So you mentioned um, some issues with dialogue uh, getting lost a bit. Any other things to, to watch out for in, in those scenarios? Um, not gen generally the mix downs mix down very well. That was the biggest one we noticed very early on when we were doing the first series of Formula One. We would, you know, we, we were putting these guys in the in the centre, which you know, which sounded great and atmosphere. So everyone's patting each other on the back and saying that sounds amazing. We would then start watching the down mixes in in stereo and thinking, crikey, the they're sounding a bit quiet now. You know, they sound they're kind of appropriate for the for the Atmos mix, but a bit quiet on the TV mix. We've since fiddled with it again, and you know, you can change some of the down mix settings and fiddle with that, and you you can over you 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 can tweak it to make it better. It wasn't huge; it was just subtle. But again, it's it, it's you you've got to bear in mind this is an effect you're doing, and not you know it, it we're, we're kind of pushing what it's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a great effect, and it's a great sound. So. We would just make the Atmos, probably the, 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 the dialogue in the Atmos mix a bit louder than we would want. So to make sure it would down mix correctly into the stereo and the 5-1 down mixes. Uh, it's only subtle, probably a couple of dBs, but it was, it was noticeable. It was yeah. noticeable. So have we lost Simon? The ah, there he is, he's back. Good. <laughs> Thought he did well, one of the biggest pitfalls, which is, which is interesting <laughs> about working in Atmos, is you need to remember if you're doing, if you're, if the production you're working with likes changing things a lot in the online, mm -hmm. uh, you need to bear in mind, once you've played out your Atmos session, you can't change the length of it. So you, you can add time to the end, but you can't make it shorter. So if they, if they decide to lock out 10 seconds, you're then having to play out your whole Atmos mix again to the RMU because you can't lock off the end. Most streamers want the Atmos file to match the length of the video files. So you, you have to play it out again. So for, type, for fast turnaround jobs, we often say, fine we can mix this in atmos but please bear in mind you can't start re-editing the online because <laughs> you'll you'll we'll have to keep playing it out and it's a, yeah it's an hour every time so it's a bit that in mind yeah sorry i disappeared for a while there my system completely froze which um also means that I've, my chat has completely reset so i'm Excellent. completely uh reliant on you now dave and gil if you've got the questions up there still good good um Yes, yeah, as, as you say, it's sort of trying. There's lots of questions coming in covering different areas, um, so we may have to ju jump around a little bit. Um, so uh, let's have a look. Um, how are you dealing with review videos or check videos? Uh, quick check laybacks to video uh, to view for your client it comes in from Mike. Um, yeah, good question. So at the farm, we have our own system called Fred, which is our own uh, video uh, review system. I can create a, a quick time or a ProRes and drop it into an automated um, folder and it will spit out um, a, a review uh, link to, and go straight to our clients. Obviously that's stereo um, and that is stereo and has that's probably been the biggest problem with lockdown actually being reviewing with clients. Um, you know, I can mix great in my, in my loft here. I've got a great setup. I'm very lucky to have some, some room up here, but I, I haven't got the clients next to me. They're not hearing the same sound. They will. They were. They are still signing it off in stereo. For most jobs, and we're hoping when we get back into studios again, the clients will come back into the studios and hear it at Moss because it's a very different experience. For the F1 uh, series, the, the clients would tend to sign off um, each episode in Atmos. Um, they would give us some notes. They would all go, uh, and they would then they'll be left with us and the producer to watch it back in five one and in stereo to make sure the down mixes also work. So. We, 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 we make sure we've got the time to, do, to listen to all the mixes. As a mixer, I want to hear all of them, make sure they all work. Um, but the client definitely needs to hear the stereo mix um, at the end to make sure it works for stereo. Because if there's any, any issues, they want to make, make sure they can hear it beforehand. And I make them. <laughs> I make them sit down and watch it in stereo. Cool. 
but there's actually a good one here. Um, just as a as an idea, how much uh, extra time do you need to deliver a Britain's Got Talent episode mix in Atmos compared to just traditional stereo five one? Um, well, Britain's Got Talent is still delivered in stereo currently. Um, I think if we were ever to do that, the, the issue is the, the issue is delivering it to the broadcasters and getting it all QC'd and checked in time. That's that's more the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I think it's when we made that transition. I remember years ago I made that we made uh, the transition from stereo to five one, and I was one of the early adopters for five one as well. Actually, uh, with, with Sky, um, a lot of the, the first documentaries we made were in five one. And you, you kind of added a lot more time and you, you, know, you, you weren't used to it. It was different. It was unusual. Um, but now most things I mix, I, I will mix, even if it's, if, if it's a stereo, I will mix it in 5.1 because I'm used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also a great format. And the only thing stopping me doing that in, in Atmos is because we've got the studios. So I, couldn't, I, I can't move around and uh, I mix something in, in Atmos and go, oh, I'm, tomorrow I'm in another studio. Oh, they haven't got Atmos in there, so I can't do that. Otherwise, I would probably start to do it. The biggest problem with Atmos is is that is there's no there's no real time bouncing, you know, like the, which is which you have in Pro Tools now. You you can bounce out a, a mix very quickly, you know, in ten minutes and have a mix ready there. With still, you know, with Atmos, I, I kind of think the RMU is like a tape deck, so you're kind of doing a layback again to tape. Think of it in that format. You've got to play out your mix. Yeah, it's a good good chance of reviewing, have a watch back, but you need to allow that time to do your layback to the RMU and then print out your stems. The stems then need limiting because they don't come out of the RMU limited. So you need to limit them, uh, render them out, name them, check your stereo mixes also to loudness spec, render that out, and then you're then, then you're there. So I don't, uh, something like Britain's Got Talent is quite quite tight turnaround. I don't, I don't see that being an Atmos anytime soon because of the, the, the tight times it, it, it's in. So. Um, who knows? You know, as 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 technology gets quicker and people get quicker, it, it, who knows? It might be listening to it in that more soon. Good, Simon. Have so, you seen any more that you? Yeah, uh... there's a couple. I know we're we're getting pretty close to the hour now. Are you okay for a couple more there, Nick? Sure. Yep. Yep. You can't say no when I ask that. That's not fair. Enough. I can't say no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm go- I want to get to Ambersonics because I'm glad somebody else asked the Ambersonics question, which means I ha- I'm allowed to. But, um, <laughs> but the probably somebody else asked um, a one that has probably got wider interest, which is they noticed that you've got two machines on your hardware scheme, or two Pro Tools machines. So is that pretty standard? And are you are you recording to one, or is are they both playback machines? Two Pro, but there's, right. there's only one Pro Tools machine in there, so we, everything's running in the box. Okay. Uh, we don't, um, yeah, everything, yeah, everything's running. We, we've at the farm, we've always done that. We don't have recorders, right. recorder machines or anything like that. We've, um, we've always pushed Pro Tools to its limits, um, and tried to keep everything in the box. The, our, all our Atmos systems have uh, three HDX cards because right. we just, yeah, you, you do need more processing in them. Um, but the um, but other than that, yeah, it's all done in the box. Uh, all, all our templates have have the recorder session built into them, so we can record it back in uh, from the RMU. We tend to export res renders and bring them back into the session. But um, yeah, we don't we don't have separate separate protocol system for our recorder sessions. Cool. Yeah, I must have, I think I misread the it's the different cards being different protocol systems. That makes more sense. There's two. There's two matrix boxes, but um, yeah, but yeah. As we discussed, that you know, you can have get away with one of those now. But yeah, we only have one Pro Tools system, um, and yeah. some of those are on cheese graters still. <laughs> Amazingly, um, wow. They still they still work really well. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. So just a quick one on Ambisonics then. Uh, when you did the Igloo show, how were you converting between Ambisonics and uh, Atmos or Atmos beds? Uh, from memory, and it was a while back now, it was about a year ago, I was I was decoding them using the proprietary decoder that came with the mic. Mm-hmm. Top of my head, I can't remember which mic it was now, but there was a there's a proprietary decoder that came with it. The sound recorders told me the patterns and everything, what I needed to, to decode it with. Uh, and then I think I used uh, Nugent, I think I used Halo up, up uh, I think right. I used Halo to get it into the um, Atmos world. I think from memory, it worked. It worked very well. I, I do remember thinking this this does translate really well. And obviously, then there was the whole d- debate about listening to it um, in binaural as well. That, that's another big thing with with Atmos, which I haven't mentioned yet. It's the whole binaural world. 
um, you know, w when when broadcasters are, are able to, to to give us the binaural down mixes, and and the binaural on, on headphones does sound amazing. I mean, it's um, it gives you an amazing sense of height. Not quite the height you get from a studio, but it gives a reasonable amount of height in, in your headphones. Um, so once once they can pass that information off from an Atmos mix onto a phone and onto the iPad, onto a laptop, yeah, it'd be brilliant. It'd be a very powerful medium. Uh, and again, Ambersonics was part of that. And, and the sound recorders was really keen to use Ambersonics. Um, yeah. We had a great shot where he went, the, 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 uh, the guy was, go, someone was going round him and, and we used Ambersonics for that. And a lot, a lot of the atmospheres were done in Ambersonics as well. So, and, 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 and MS as well. So it was, it was a huge, right. con yeah, a huge melting pot of sounds and recording how we did them all. Brilliant. Um, so, oh yeah, actually Dave, did you have any last burning ones that are coming through multiple times or? Well, one, yeah, a couple multiple times about the specifics of speaker positionings um, around your TV. So uh, what's the difference distance between the left edge of your TV and the right edge of your uh, left of LCR loudspeaker? Uh, 50 inches suggest your left and right speakers are quite a few inches away. Do the speakers feel wider than your TV as they visually are? I'm reading that, but um, I hope you get this, a sense of what that question is asking. So they are, the, the speakers on the side are, are flush with the edge of the TV. Mm -hmm. So in the days when we used to have, you know, big cathode ray te tellies, which had speakers at the sides, it's, it's basically like that again. Um, and it gives, you know, rather than having the speakers underneath or hidden at the back of the telly in these very thin LCD TVs, it just gives you some decent speakers on the side. But they are literally up against the side of the TV. Um, it looks like one unit. So yeah, the clients come in and don't realise there are there are actually speakers separate to the TV. They, it looks like one continuous unit. Um, and people people asking what the brand was, I can't remember <laughs> what the brand of the meals. And I tell you, you can't actually get them anymore. We bought the last of them up because the company doesn't make them anymore, unfortunately. Right. But they 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 they, they are literally stuck to the side of the TV. So um, I I can get a picture of them for for people if they're really that desperate to see them. But in terms of your the main monitors, that is all preset by Dolby, isn't it? Where they where they go? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they specify exactly where all the speakers are in the studio in the main monitoring. Absolutely, they 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 they, they all bring they bring lasers into the studio. They'll measure everything. They check the light, the alignment of the speakers, the sides, the rears, uh, the ones above you. It's all calculated to the to the millimeter, and they and they do come in and check it all. Obviously, you, you, you can build a home studio without certification, but you're, not, you're never going to be quite sure whether you're going to get the right sound you, you would do from a certified studio. Um, but yeah, Dolby do specify exactly how, you know, how, how they need to be in a certified room. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, you, you don't have to have a certified Atmos room. You can build it yourself and yeah, have a go. <laughs> I've, I'm not sure which broadcasters want certified rooms now. I don't think Netflix mind anymore. Um, but I'm not sure about I'm not sure about all the others. Well, I don't think there's any chance we're going to get through all these questions. We might have to get you back. <laughs> there's quite a few, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, so they're still coming in. Yeah, we, we, coming. we can do it again. To do a part two. <laughs> um, Those are the questions. So, yeah, I don't know, Dave, if you, unless you've got anything really... Well, we've obviously missed that that's what people are asking about. Have you covered sort of, you know, kind of where you check your sort of Atmos 5.1 and stereo mixes? Presumably that's just all done in, in the room at the time. But uh, yeah, yeah. So there's a kind of specific yeah. process for monitoring those down mixes. Uh, no, I mean, they are, the, the RMU is constantly spitting out these down mixes. So in our template, we have the, the re-renders coming back into our template. Um, We've got S6s, lucky to have S6s in the studio. So on the monitoring of the S6, you can choose to send, to listen to the, the, the 7 one mix in the, on, the, on the near field speakers, uh, the 5 one down mix on the near field speakers, or with a flick of a switch, we can hear the, the 2.0 down mix out of the TV. Um, and, we're, and we're constantly checking them. You know, we're constantly flicking between, the, between all those speakers and checking all the down mixes, making sure everything's working as we're expecting. Uh, but I've got to say that the, the, the down mix is, they, yeah, as, as long as you're not going crazy and, and not going mad with the Atmos mixes, 
your down mixes will work. You know, they, they will work as, as it does with a five one to a stereo down mix. Right. As long as you're not going crazy with the loudness, you're not, you know, going too theatrical with it. It will sound great and will down mix really well. If you start moving things around the room inside the room and going crazy, then yeah, it's going to, you're going to hit some walls. <laughs> <laughs> so we probably ought to start wrapping up. I would, I'd say, you know, if you, if you did join the webinar sort of halfway through, I think the recording will go up um, at some point. So that maybe that your question was answered earlier on in the, in the call. Um, we do also have quite a lot of info up on the Avid site. There's like a dog getting started in Atmos kind of microsite on the Avid site. Um, so yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much, Nick. There's obviously a ton of interest in this. This is really, really golden information. There's, I've certainly learned a ton of stuff. Uh, um, pleasure. It's been, uh, it's, been, it's been really good fun. That's awesome. So, uh, and thank you very much for the rest of the Avid crew for uh, moderating things. I'll just quickly share my screen to show you what we've got coming up next week um, with Gaurav. So we're going back, we're going for a kind of music theme uh, next week. Uh, so I hope you can join us for that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for joining. And thanks again, Nick. Pleasure. Uh, been a pleasure. Great to speak to everyone. Hope you do it again.